We begin the process of configuring the ShareScan connector for Microsoft SharePoint by launching the Administration Console. Then navigate to the Connectors tab and select the SharePoint connector from the list. The main portion of the screen provides a single tab for configuring the majority of the connector. Here we can set up a single or multiple SharePoint destinations. Clicking the New button opens up the Create a Destination window. Here we can see all of the options for our destination arranged into three tabs. The first tab allows us to name our destination and select our authentication options. Let's call our destination Scan to Marketing SharePoint Website. If you create multiple destinations for your connector, these names will appear within the ShareScan client. The user will select the destination for their scan document by selecting it from a list, so be sure to put some thought into what you call yours. The next field is where you can fill in your SharePoint URL. Work with your customer's SharePoint administrator or someone knowledgeable in IT to get you the correct information. If you enable the navigation option, the end user will be able to browse throughout any subfolders they have rights to that are below the destination URL. If you leave this box unselected, the user will only be able to deposit scan documents into the folder specified in the hyperlink field. In our case, I'd like to allow navigation, so I'll check the box before proceeding. As with several other ShareScan connectors, the connector requires the use of a service account. The connector uses this account for browsing purposes, allowing the end user to dynamically view the SharePoint folder structure when using the connector. Having a usable service account is one of the items listed on the ShareScan pre-installation checklist, or Pickle. This document is critical to review prior to any ShareScan installation, and is covered in more detail in the ShareScan installation video also available on our YouTube channel. The pre-installation checklist contains information about supported Microsoft SharePoint versions and details any prerequisite work that needs to be completed prior to connector configuration. You can find this document on the Engage website at the URL shown on the screen. The Logon Mode option allows you to decide whether or not to prompt the user for their credentials when scanning. Runtime forces the user to enter their SharePoint username and password, while the Login As option uses the previously entered service account instead. Once the account information is entered, you're required to test the connection. This ensures that the SharePoint hyperlink you entered is legitimate and that the service account credentials can access it. If your test fails here, double check the information you entered. If your test passes as ours did, you're ready to move on to the next tab. The upper half of the navigation screen allows you to customize which SharePoint destination types will appear when using the connector. If, for example, your customer only stores documents in document libraries, you can select Custom from the default filter type list and then select Document and Picture Libraries from the list on the right. This will have the effect of hiding other types of SharePoint destinations like lists and sites. Doing so can simplify the navigation screens for the end user. The Grouping Type option allows you to toggle between alphabetically listing destinations or grouping them by type. Ask your contact which method they prefer. Also ask your customer if they're utilizing a SharePoint feature called My Sites. My Sites are personalized document repositories that can be set up for members of an organization, similar to the concept of Windows Home folders. If your customer uses this feature, simply check the Support My Site checkbox and enter in the root My Site URL. When users log in when using the connector, they'll automatically be able to route documents to their personal My Site directory. With the Navigation tab completed, let's move to the third and last tab called Columns. Columns are SharePoint's way of referring to document metadata. One of the major advantages of storing documents in a SharePoint repository is that they can be tagged with metadata, which can help you find them easier at a later date. The key to understanding this tab is to understand that all metadata rules are set up by the SharePoint administrator on the SharePoint website. Let's use a simple example. Let's say an administrator has defined three pieces of metadata for when we scan our marketing-related documents. Perhaps these tags are for document title, date, and author. In addition, the administrator has elected to make only the author field mandatory. The Show option defines how much of this metadata to display to the end user. 
the All option will show all three fields at time of scan. The user would then enter the title, date, and author, and the document will be appropriately tagged and stored in SharePoint. Using the Required field will only display any fields that the SharePoint administrator has defined as mandatory. In this case, only the Author field will be displayed within the ShareScan client. The None option will bypass showing the metadata screen in the ShareScan client and instead use any default metadata that the admin has defined on the SharePoint site. The Auto Index option allows you to predefine metadata attributes within ShareScan that will be passed along with any document that uses this connector. This is useful if you have a particular SharePoint workflow where all the documents share common metadata. At this point, we've defined all of the attributes of our destination. Clicking OK will return us to the main configuration screen. We can then turn our attention to the right-hand column, where we can further define connector options as well as enabling any services that we need. Let's set our label to read Scan Marketing Materials and set a custom image. This text and image will appear on the connector button, helping users distinguish this workflow from others. As with any ShareScan connector, we can use the Next section to enable or disable document services. Let's assume our customer requires 128-bit document encryption and they would like their PDFs to be text searchable. Admins can also enable other ShareScan services such as bait stamping, offline processing, and forms processing by scrolling down and enabling the appropriate checkboxes. As usual, we must now save the profile and give it a name by selecting the Save Current Profile As button in the middle of the screen. We'll name our profile Marketing Documents Connector. The last step in the administration console is always to deploy the connector to one or more devices. In this case, we'll be using the ShareScan simulator to emulate an actual scanning device. So we click on the Devices tab, select Simulator, and locate the SharePoint profile name in the list. Select the checkbox next to it and click the Save button. This deploys the connector profile to the simulator client. You should always test out your profiles in the simulator to ensure they're functioning properly. The easiest way to launch the simulator is to click on the simulator button in the home toolbar. You should now see your newly created button available for testing. Clicking the connector button will bring up the familiar preview screen with its sample scanned image. Along the left are buttons for adding additional pages to the scan job, deleting pages, rotating pages, as well as options for scanner and document settings. Let's click on the Document Settings button to verify some of our configuration choices. You can see that the encryption and searchable text options we enabled in the Administration Console are present. Click OK to return to the preview screen and then the Next button to proceed with the workflow. Next, we'll enter a password to encrypt our document and re-enter it to confirm our choice. The next screen prompts us for our SharePoint login credentials. This is because we use the Runtime Authentication option in the connector. Now we're connected to the SharePoint website and you can see the subfolder structure. We can browse to our preferred destination folder or take advantage of the Recent option, which shows us where we've deposited documents recently. We'll select Cell Sheets as our folder choice. Because this is a relatively simple SharePoint folder structure, there is no more browsing to be done. We select Next to proceed, and the final step is to enter in any of the configured SharePoint column information that the SharePoint administrator has defined. In this case, document title, date, and author. Note the author field's yellow text and red asterisk. This is a visual cue that this field is required to be filled out. If you recall from our earlier discussion on metadata, we gave the example that the author field would be required. We then click the Send button and we're brought to a screen that indicates the successful transmission of the document into SharePoint. Besides the option to quit, we also have other redirect options for scanning a new document back into the same SharePoint destination or scanning the same document into a new destination. You've just seen how easy it is to set up the eCopy ShareScan connector for Microsoft SharePoint. 
be sure to visit our YouTube channel to watch the other ShareScan-related tutorial videos.